this interview today. Thank you. Thank you for your invitation. I'm really looking forward to this. Uh, I know it's a surprise interview for you, <laughs> but I'm glad that you uh, agreed to it at the last minute. <laughs> you get authenticity. <laughs> yes, yes. And uh, you have no time to prepare, so that's the best part. Uh, I'm always prepared. <laughs> <laughs> so, one of the reasons we thought you know, it would be great to talk to uh, parents like yourself is just to understand you know, how it was like uh, taking care of a high-performing athlete from a younger age and you know, some of the challenges, some of the joys you know, and some of the not-so-great moments. You know. so I think a lot of parents would really enjoy or appreciate uh, listening to your experiences. So mm. I hope you're ready to go for that. <laughs> I share whatever I know. <laughs> okay, great. So maybe what we can do is uh, let's start uh, from uh, you know, Max's early years. Um, can you share a bit about his uh, early interest in sports or any sports? You know? How did it all begin? Okay. I won't share really with sports because I think it's an attitude, right? Sure. It's a, it's a character of a person. So Max, from young, he is always quite reflective. Mm observant he doesn't dive into anything he he reflects he observes he reflects and then he does it i see and from young he has this tendency he doesn't like to lose okay. he's very upset when he loses but exams is different right because mm -hmm. you need to do certain things under a time pressure under a limited mm -hmm. uh, uh, time um, but there's another skill Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Knowledge and exams are two different things. Mm -hmm. I can be very exam smart, mm -hmm. but does it mean I really know what I do? I don't know. Right? I can regurgitate everything for you and I get full marks. Mm -hmm. But afterwards, you ask me if I dig deeper into the concepts, mm -hmm. you have no idea how things actually go together. Mm -hmm. That's very possible. Yes. Right? So, you have, that's how I later through Valentin learned how to look at this. Mm -hmm. You know, it's um, knowing the concept is very important. Mm. Don't worry about the exams. The exams he might have to take later, mm. but that's another set of skills that you have to train him in like every other skill. Mm. It's a skill set, right? If you do enough 10-year series, are you going to fail? Unlikely. Because they've asked it in a thousand ways and you've done it in a thousand ways. They're not going to ask very far from mm. what you, you know? More important is, do you know how to read the question? Do you know what they're asking for? Do you have the knowledge of what they're asking for? Do you, how to, do you know how to form the answers so that others can understand what you're trying to deliver? I think that's the key point, okay. right? When did you start to feel, when you observe Max, when did you start to feel that, okay, we are doing fine? Valentin's approach, my approach combined, our child is coming along just fine. When, when did you first get a sense of that? Uh, what told you that the child was coming along? Only recently. <laughs> <laughs> Surprisingly, I take okay. a lot of time to be reassured. I see. I think a lot of... I mean, I still can't say it's fine. You okay. know, and when everybody says, Oh, look at Max, he's fine. I said, look, my cake is still in the oven. <laughs> it looks good for now, but I don't know if I open the oven door, it's going to, your souffle is going to all like deflate, right? Okay. But I think it's... Uh, is for me, I'm more vigilant, maybe. I'm more mm. considerate. I think that it's a never-ending job, right? Okay. You know, you, you, you think at this point of time, it's okay, but what is okay, when is okay, okay. I, I don't know, right? It depends on whose benchmark, whose yardsticks you're okay. using, you know. So it's your yardstick. What, what, when you see Max, you know, over the years, what told you, okay, not too bad, we're doing fine. It may not be super brilliant, but it's not lousy. You know, what, what gave you the assurance? Was it the way he, he conducted himself, the way he talked? What was it that Of course, when you? the children manifest the values that you have tried to, okay. tra to, to transmit to them, it's always a reassuring, right? It's okay. all about ourselves, right? Okay. We come with a certain set of like, um, uh, ingrained uh, standards okay. and then we live with them and then okay. we try to transmit it, right? Because if you ask anybody, they, they think they are, their way of growing up is the best way. Right, sure. Right? Right. So you try to also replicate maybe ah. and you know, so... So what were some of these values that you okay, were hoping so, to transmit and mm -hmm, as you saw him mm -hmm. reflect it, you felt, ah, okay, yeah, we're not okay. too bad. <laughs> <laughs> so in terms of knowledge, when, you know, when people ask him questions, he could answer, he could conduct himself 
which we think quite reasonably How and old mature. Was he mm, very he was young, like nine, eight, nine, I mean, because okay. ten. He he tend to be youngest on the circuit, so okay. we're not be, even if it's a sporting question or non sporting mm -hmm. question, you find that actually, you know. He's okay. He can answer them. You know, okay. if he doesn't know how to answer them, at least he knows how to look up for the answer. <laughs> I see. So even as an eight, nine year old, he could handle questions and conversations with. Yes. I presume much older yes. people. Yes. Yeah. I, I have to say he's very privileged. We, we okay. are very privileged because we live on an island where the tourists who comes, mm. the people who comes, are very. Um, they are quite filtered already. So they are right. all of a certain level. Right. So he has very. Um, intellectually stimulating questions. I see. Okay. And he, we get scientists, we get business people, we get all sorts of people, Olympians, whatever you have it, we, okay. you name it, we have it. And he gets to interact with people like that. So when you, be, when you live in this realm, you do not think that it is quite out of reach. Right. You know? It's normal. It's for you, it's normal, right? To achieve is normal, right? Because okay. that's what you see in your everyday life, right? I, see. I mean, everyday life for, for a good while. So, and... After that, he became the youngest in the in the in the kiting community. He he's given interviews. I mean, mm. I think Straits Times started to interview him when I don't know, like, quite young, and and um, we say that we never want to be in the interview because you know your presence alone influences the person, mm. the way they communicate, what they want to communicate. They mm. become very aware, and I was very curious to see what would be communicated without our presence whether consciously or subconsciously influencing his answer. And when the first interview came out, I said, wow, I would have answered that. <laughs> That's quite all right. <laughs> you were impressed. Uh, yeah, suitably. <laughs> huh? Yeah, and I think um, he has some values which I, I treasure, like a little bit down to earth. And, okay. you know, I, I try to emphasize those down values. To earth. Yeah. Okay. Like, what I, tells I you that he's a down to earth boy? What does he do or say that tells you? Mm, he has, I don't think he has ever said that I'm the best or, you know, and, and anything alluding to that, you know. When asked about his achievements, very often he'll tell you that I'm lucky uh, because other contestants are, you know, you know, I try to do what I do and concentrate, you know, and don't think about, you know. Um, I think, you know, these are things that tells me that, you know, he's not trying to advertise his uh, skills or his achievements mm. too much. Yeah? Okay. So here is an eight, nine year old growing up in an environment where he gets to meet scientists, businessmen, Olympians. He's just wandering around the, the place talking to whoever is happy to talk to him. And it wasn't even a deliberate. Part. Yeah. You yeah. know, your own trying to push It was him not out, a contrived, right? yeah, right? no, no, yeah. So he just happily learned how to, to talk to whoever was there. And what was the response like from, uh, you know, some of these guests that came through, like this nine-year-old sitting here and they're talking to me? Wow, oh, he's very mature. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's always been a little bit uh, ahead of his years, let's mm. put it this way. And um, as a parent, I, wor I worry more, you know, mm. is he going to be a child? Does oh. he get to be a child, okay. right? But um, I think that you have to ask him. <laughs> and um, yeah, they, they feel that, um, of course, you know, they are children. They will have, you know, I get complaints about him too. He has his moments and, you know, uh, at first it's very hard on me and I take it personally. Like, is it an upbringing? Is it, you know, um, and afterwards, you know. How did, how did you cope with those criticisms about Max? Mm, I often look at myself and say, what can I do or what can I, you know, what, what, it, what went wrong, you know. Uh, I think it's a very, uh, maybe, a, I, I, it's a very uh, Asian culture, you know. If somebody says, oh, then you think, okay, what did I do wrong, yeah. right? What did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, uh, over time and, you know, if you get, um, if you get, Eight times compliments and two times criticism, what you want to concentrate on? Do you like to reinforce the good or you want to suppress the evil? What do you want to do? Okay. Right? You focus on what you can do better for him and how, he, how to get him, you know, in the, direct him and uh, like help him to, you know, encourage to flourish him in the way that he can from his, what he already has. Or you can, you know, I mean, I say this now, but probably I acted more the other way at that time, 
trying to improve whatever that was not good, right? So when you look back now, mm -hmm. what do you think you did well in terms of raising Max in terms to be what he is today with, with some advantage of time? You know, mm -hmm. What did you do when he was younger, in his, mm -hmm. when he was six, seven, yeah. eight, nine, that makes him what he is today at 16? I mean, less. I don't use the word well in parenting. You parent like you parent, mm -hmm. like you can parent. Mm -hmm. It starts with your beliefs, right? Mm -hmm. Because I believe that, you know, we like to think that we are engineers. I read somewhere, you like to think that we're engineers. We can engineer this child into somebody, you know, you can engineer them into some athlete, some scientist, some doctors. No, you are not an engineer. You go in and you are a shepherd, right? Mm. You have the sheep, you have the qualities there, you can't bring out what's... Mm. You can't bring out in there what's not there, mm. and you can't suppress too much what's there. Mm. So you try to, you know, make sure that, you know, they have a secure place mm. to graze their pasture, the correct grass to eat, mm. the safety, the security, the other factors that you believe is good in blossoming what's already in there. So what did you see there in Max that you realised that you had to encourage in him as a mother? Oh, I don't know if, I, if I'm an encouraging mother. That you have to ask him. You know? <laughs> <laughs> to the best of your knowledge. You to know. the best of my knowledge. What, what uh, did you try to encourage in him that you thought, okay, Max is like He that. has a passion mm. and we try to support the passion. Mm. Uh, monetarily, mm. emotionally, physically. Mm. You know, uh, well, I'm in charge of the food section, right? That's the, like the most important part of the wow. culture, right? So, you know, I give him whatever, you know, okay. I don't give him a nutritious balanced meal. <laughs> I just give him what they like. Okay. <laughs> I'm whatever very you, indulgent. Whatever you like, I make. Yeah, I yeah. If it's you. curry, if it's chicken puff, if it's chicken rice, <laughs> go for it. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. I mean, it's, as, as, as a child, it's natural for uh, a child to be close to the mother. But at some point, especially for sons, some, in some ways, you know, they will start to drift away from you as they get older. Uh, when, when did you start noticing that he is starting to be his own man, he's becoming a young man? And when did you start noticing that? That he well, doesn't come to mummy so often anymore? Um, maybe it's difficult for other mothers who have always been very... Um, how do you say, very um, watching every step of yeah. the child because okay. I am not such a mother. I'm ah. a bit lazy, so, you know, I do a bit. I'm not so helicopter mom. Ah, like, okay, okay, if I can see him, it's okay. He's okay. playing there, it's okay. okay. So, um, maybe I feel a bit less of this effect okay. because okay. Um, he's always been independent. Mm. You know, when he was young, when he was old enough to dress himself, you dress yourself. Okay. You when you're old enough to make the choice of your clothes, you dress it. Okay. You know, um, we give a lot of autonomy to the mm. children in the areas we feel that they can have autonomy. Mm. In other areas, we inform, we don't discuss, we don't consult. Mm. We consult a lot in the areas we feel is not critical to safety. Okay. But can you give us an example where of, of that, uh, where you're consulting, you're informing them? Okay, consulting is like, okay, you know, if you want to wear your, you know, pyjamas, I would say I don't suggest that, it's not very, you know, but if you want to do it, do it, you know, I mean, you, I tell you the pros and cons, and you made this, it's not, con okay. you know, at 21, he's not likely to dress as a, in a pyjama to do something, you know, it's something that's long term, mm. it's, a, it's probably a phase, mm. and you know, um, other things where he says, you know, he wants to, for example, you know, when he says, um, I want to go kiting without helmet. That's a no, no, no negotiation. No. You go with your helmet because that's a safety issue. Mm. We're not asking you, we're telling you. Right. That's the information. Okay. That's not a discussion. Okay. So, you know, it depends on the topics that's being raised, mm. right? So in many ways, we try to have a dialogue. Mm. And then in other ways, no, it's not a dialogue. It's not. <laughs> it's very clear. And when you're having a dialogue, and I presume he's still 8, 9, 10, you're having a dialogue with a very young child, um, what was the effect on, on him? When, because, you know, you, as an adult, it's a natural tendency to feel that, why should I talk to you? I will tell you and then you do it. But you are having a dialogue. What was the effect of having a dialogue with a child? I think we forget that 
you know, children are their own people. Mm. They may, may not be able to articulate or format it in the way that you can really make sense or, you know, but they are their own people, mm. right? So if you from young, maybe they don't understand and you try to, you know, um, talk to them, it can be frustrating or whatever, but actually I think the message is you are trying to get them to think autonomously. Mm. And this independent thinking is one of the critical things we feel that mm. you should be able to do. Uh, because otherwise you are just, if you are just telling, if somebody is telling you what to do all the time in your life, what do you know what to do when they don't stop telling you? Mm. Because you have never been thought, or everything is a habit, right? Even thinking for yourself is a habit. Mm. So if you start this habit from young, or like, that's what I like to think, then you tell them the message is there. I mean, the, the actions is one thing, but the message is think for yourself. Mm. Mm. Think about what you are doing. You know, you have to make some autonomous decision. And, and how did Max respond to this, uh, uh, this freedom to make his autonomous decisions? What uh, did you notice? I don't know. I'm not so sure I, answer, I understand your question. Because you're willing to get, have a dialogue yeah. with your son, right? As opposed uh, to just telling him, yeah. do this, do that, yeah. don't argue with me. Yeah. But you, you let him do that. Yeah. So how, how did he respond to it? Did he at first respond with, uh, I don't know what to do, or he just... I don't think so because it started, it started very young. Yes, okay, so like I said, if you want to think the, you know, if you want to think about independence at seventeen, you don't start at sixteen okay. and three quarters. It's way too late, right? You start at seven. Okay. You so want to be independent at ten. You start at zero probably. So this has been three. a habit, uh, an approach of yours, <clears throat> with with Max. I correct now. It's more approach of my uh, 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 husband uh, that I okay. adopt. Okay, so he treats the children like. A reasonable, okay. not adult, but a reasonable person okay. that you can reason with. Okay. I think if you start certain things with them from young, well, it's just a natural sure. process, right? And what was your initial uh, approach? Of course, I'm the you know the Asian parent, you know, take the cane and you know, <laughs> let me you know, okay. give a good slapping, okay. you know. I'm not different, okay. but I just saw it was more effective uh, because the children takes if they have anything like our rebellious and horrible stubborn nature then maybe soft is the way to go okay. so, <laughs> doesn't do very well being hard so you you saw despite your initial reaction which is the more asian style my, my more yeah my tendencies your tendencies yes. you saw that it was more effective mm. with valentine mm. style mm. I, I learned it the hard way <laughs> okay you learned it the hard way yeah. I'm, now i'm very curious <laughs> what was it that made you learn the hard way. What happened that made that you realize ah this approach doesn't work. Oh, you work. have a lot of uh, standoffs. Standoffs you know? with, uh, you, with not Max with Max, or? not with uh, with the other one. Ah. Yeah, because every child is different, right? But uh, okay. then okay. actually, um, Max is a e I mean, I won't say easier. He's a different child, right? Sure. So a different child. Yeah. But you, if it's unfair to treat him hmm. the way. I would. I mean, actually, I'm more strict with him I than see. with the. Uh, but he is the most, I would say, compliant one, the I easier see. one okay. in terms of, you know, he doesn't mm. push back too I much. See. And okay. but they all have their own minds, you know. Like he sure. said, like I tell him, Max, go for another five minutes. No, I won't go. There is nothing on earth you can do to make him go. Nothing. You know, he is very sad when he makes a decision. So you start to understand the character and you work with the character, right? Mm -hmm. You can force it your way. Mm -hmm. But then what you okay. have to ask yourself, is the forcing the way more important or is the relationship more important? You have to weigh for yourself, right? Because mm -hmm. I have in my mind what, how I would like to ideally mm -hmm. be with my child, mm -hmm. right? And then there is the reality that strikes you. And mm -hmm. then how do you manage this? How do you, you know... So some of your ideal parenting never ideal. issues, <laughs> they had to, to slowly fade away. Yeah. Because yeah. the reality of your child is another matter altogether. Yeah, I think, you know... Uh, what, what, what did you have to give up, you know, in terms of some of your parenting standards? Yeah, like, you know, you can be very strict, you have to be very strict, you have to enforce all the values and, 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 and you know, you, you, you start with ideals. Mm -hmm. Then uh, reality comes in and then you say, you know what, forget about the ideas, just do it, just do it, Chad. just go with the flow, it's much easier. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, maybe I'm not so reflective. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I guess it sounds to me that, you know, in, in wanting to deal with the reality, who your child really is, mm -hmm. you, you wanted to work with him as opposed to like, always want to have a standoff with right, him. Right, right, yeah. yeah. Right? You, know? you don't try to turn a rose uh, into a tulip and then the <laughs> other way around. So if you, the more, the better you can to recognize a rose as a rose and appreciate its qualities, mm -hmm. then you can better appreciate what you have. I guess, maybe. So when you look back now, uh, mm -hmm. what are some of your you know, prouder moments uh, about what Max has achieved? And, and not necessarily just about medals or, you know, you know as a human being, as a, as a mother of, a, of Max, what, what are you proud of that he okay. has become? Yeah. Actually, I am never at least outwardly, very proud of his achievements. That's for everybody else to do, you know? Okay. He has enough pride coming from that area, <laughs> so I don't need to feed into that channel. That's not my area of expertise, and that's, mm. I don't see my role like that. Mm. I'm proud when he answers an interview in a down-to-earth manner. Mm. He gives everybody... He takes everybody along this bandwagon of mm. achievements, and he gives, I told him it is very important to take everybody along on the way mm. because there are a lot of people who put in efforts whose efforts will never be recognized mm. even in the smallest way mm. because you get to stand on the podium. Right. It's obvious, mm. you know, but there are a lot of people who contribute in many other ways that will never be standing on the podium. Mm. And you have to bring to light what what it means to have a team, what it means to have a spirit, you know, and when he is able to convey or express the spirit, it makes me very proud. That's great. And now that he's older, uh, your role, how has it evolved you know, over, the, the t over the last few years? You know, how do you see your, your place in his, in his circle of support? I still cook for him. <laughs> He's very independent. He can cook himself. But I think he still enjoys a mummy cook meal. Uh, okay. Still, you know, I think um, no matter how old they are, it's very important to be very physically close, give him a hug. He says, this is human. He's warm. It's, you know. Um, and I would like to say I'd like to be his friend, but I don't think so. At a teenage, it's not cool to have your mother as a friend. <laughs> Uh, and you can never be a friend, really. But, mm. you know, you try to share with them whatever they want to share with you. Mm. Uh, and if I want to transmit certain ideas, I try to introduce them in a manner that I hope is digestible for, you know, mm. in a more accessible manner for them. Mm. You know, it's uh, not always easy, right? Mm. I guess as he progresses, the limelight slowly becomes... Uh, more obvious on him, you know, that may come with its own pressures, expectations. You know. How do you s see your role in supporting him? You know, and how is he coping with with all that? Uh, like every lion, they are very protective of their cow, right? <laughs> so I think Yuan Zhen can maybe <laughs> attest to that. When he gets a little bit mm. of unfair mm. pressure from federations, from whoever, I start to be a tiger mom. Uh, in the real sense of it, I, I become protective. I say, okay. stay clear of my child. I think that's my role. My role is to make sure that he doesn't get unnecessary pressure mm. because I understand my child and this is a child who gives himself enough pressure. Mm. And, um, you know, like everybody says, you know, ah, you know, Max, just bring home the gold medal. You know, I say, yeah, no pressure, no pressure. Just bring home the gold medal. <laughs> you know, you make, you turn, you try to turn things light and then on the back you tell him, look, you know, that's not your focus. You try to put things into perspective. You try to support him when he, you know. I don't know how supportive he finds me that you have to ask him, but mm. I'm not the kind of mom who will call you every day and ask you, hey, how are you doing? You have mm. to report everything, you know. I trust that I call you, you know, you call me, whatever, and when you have something to share, you will share with me. Mm. I will not force you into a topic where you don't want to share. They are old enough. Mm. I will never know what he's thinking anyway. Mm. Nobody knows what you're thinking anyway. So it's up to them to come forward mm. and I will support whatever that I have to do to make his journey a little bit more uh, meaningful for him, mm. you know? Yeah. 
I guess when you think back now to his early days in Wakatobi, learning kite surfing, kite foiling, did you ever think that you'd be here now, you know, one year out, or no, less than a year out from the Olympics, and given his, uh, the expectations on him at the Olympics, did you ever think your son would be in this position? Never, never. You can, I think first of all, uh, the sport evolved so much. Mm. You know, when we started kiting, it was not even on the menu. Mm. So, Olympics only became a topic mm. when it was introduced. And at first, when it was introduced, it was even a joint one, right? Mm. It was, a, a, I think, boy and girl or something like that. And Singapore has no girls. I'm like, I forget it. You know, just do what you do. You know what I mean? It's like... And... Um, in the end, it became a separate event, and then, of course, uh, I didn't think that he was had a breakthrough at 15 when he won the Europeans, and then things just progressed from there. And um, we try not to, uh, we, we are naturally not focused so much on the results. Mm, okay. The process is very important because this journey, whatever he learns, he takes it for life with him, mm. right? No matter how many medals, I always tell him, no matter how many medals you win, and if you are not Roger Federer, you're not tennis, you're not a soccer star, you know, you know, this is a very niche sport. Mm. Very few people will even know what you're doing. Mm. Let's talk about how many times you're on the podium. Mm. So whatever podium wins you have, people will forget. But people will never forget how you make them feel. Mm. So it's for me more important how you make people feel. Right? Because that's not my focus. Winning is not my focus. That's the Federation's job. <laughs> that's the country's job. That's not my job, right? right. I said, why is it my job? When you go up there, you s they play the national anthem. They don't play Su Sang Tzu Yoma Mahao. <laughs> they don't carry my photo. They carry the national flag. That's not my job, right? So maybe as a last question, mm -hmm. so that we can uh, wrap this mm -hmm. up. What are some of your hopes and dreams, your best hopes for, for Max? Uh, you know? having to, be, to shoulder the burden of all these expectations, mm -hmm. going into a period of his life where many people will be looking at what he's doing, uh, but what's your expectations and hopes? Mm. How does he come out of this at the other end? What do yeah. you hope to see? First of all, I don't think it's a burden. Burden, I wouldn't use this word burden. Okay. Yeah, I, I would say it's a very privileged position. It's an opportunity of a lifetime. Mm -hmm. And um, what I hope he would achieve is, of course, happiness, joy. And that's irrelevant of the results mm -hmm. and the contributions he can make. Mm -hmm. For me, you are part of society and Everything you do at the end of your life, you don't ask yourself how much money you make, how many medals you win, but you ask how many people's life has, have I touched? How wide? It, it, the, <clears throat> the fact that you are successful means you have a bigger platform, bigger audience. You know, like I think a very famous guy once say, you know, the good thing about being famous is when I bore people, people think it's their fault. You know, <laughs> and that's how it is, right? Because this is something like an accessory to help you and a platform to help you to achieve what you want to achieve, mm. to contribute. But it's not. There are other ways to contribute. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We can thank you very much for <laughs> sharing your journey with Max. Yeah. Uh, you've packed a lot in you know, f with a very young man. You know, he's all of 16. Sometimes when we look at him, we forget that. that he's, he's 17 now. Yeah. 17. Yeah. You know, it's an incredible journey that he's gone on in a very f short few years. But thank you very much for thank you, sharing Les. your experience. <laughs> thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you.